Now again these are backscattered images taken from mortars actually not really concrete mortar okay there is no coarse aggregate in this case. So, you have here a system in which uh, again this is a much lower magnification image on the left side it is an image taken at only 11 x 11 times magnification that means the field of view you are looking at this width corresponds to 1 millimeter. So, this entire field of view is probably about 10 millimeters or so okay that is what you are looking at. When you look at electron microscope images or any other microscopy images make sure that you always see that there is a scale bar presented that is absolutely important without the scale bar the picture has no meaning. Okay. If there is no scale bar the picture has no meaning that is why when people go for field explorations you see that when they take uh, images of various objects they put some object for reference like a pen right next to the object that they are trying to image. The idea is to just provide an idea of the scale or size of the material. So, any image which does not have a scale bar on it is a waste okay. you need to have a scale bar always with an image. And most microscopes will auto automatically give you the scale bar, but in some cases you may have to actually additionally put in the scale bar to ensure that you are able to show that very clearly on the image. Okay. So, here you see an example on the left side of a mortar cement mortar and a smaller area in the cement mortar zoomed and magnified on the right side. And you see here you have aggregates that is siliceous aggregates and you have the paste in between the aggregate there is also an air void and what you see here is a deposit lining the air void a spot analysis of the deposit shows that you get calcium and oxygen peaks and that is basically your what can that be calcium hydroxide. So, if you look at most literature as to where calcium hydroxide can be found in cement paste typically calcium hydroxide is found mixed with the outer CSH. But because the interfaces between the aggregate and paste as well as the voids provide a large enough area for this cr highly crystalline phase to grow and nucleate into a much larger size that is why you find air voids typically lined with calcium hydroxide. If you notice very closely at the aggregate interface also you see a whitish layer forming right at the aggregate paste interface you also see a whitish layer forming there is indeed La, uh, large amount of evidence that indicates that calcium hydroxide does form or does grow in the spaces next to the aggregate. Why does it want to grow in that space because what happens in the interfacial transition zone you have much larger porosity available at the ITZ. So, there is more space for a crystal material like CSH to grow. If you see the image on the right it is a image taken from a C3S mortar that means there is no aluminate phases in this case you only have C3S reacting with water to produce cementitious hydrates. So, again please note this level of light grey which you see around the aggregate that is your calcium hydroxide you can also see calcium hydroxide in several other locations you see all those whitish specks in between the grey that is your calcium hydroxide okay, not this sorry these phases are calcium hydroxide. But what you also see are these white specks which could represent grains of C3S and you see that these grains of C3S have hydrated in specific locations these are all the hydrate products the gray level around the white is the hydrate or inner CSH that is actually formed in this case. Okay. So, what you see here is a grain of C3S that has got almost completely hydrated you only see a small speck of white inside right. So, you can see the features very clearly in this case. So, you see the cement particles which are white you see the gray levels different grays of the inner CSH and the outer CSH you see the outer CSH, CSH is darker. Why do you think the outer CSH appears darker because it is got more what pores porosity in outer CSH is much, much greater inner CSH is denser because it is forming right on the surface of your C3S. Okay outer CSH is formed by dissolution of the cementitious particles. So, in the process of formation of outer CSH lot of porosity is entrapped within the structure of the outer CSH whereas, inner CSH is a lot more denser. The uh, calcium hydroxide of course, you cannot uh, directly appreciate the difference between calcium hydroxide and inner, inner CSH in terms of gray levels in this image probably, but if you do a proper contrast you will actually get calcium hydroxide very clearly apart from your 
in a CSH in terms of difference in gray levels. Again other examples of uh, concrete specimens which have been attacked by sulphate solutions when external sulphates enter the concrete they interact with the cementitious hydration phases to produce attack products like gypsum and ettringite. So here for example is a cement mortar which is in contact with this solution of sodium sulphate this solution is on the side that is black in color. So the sulphate basically penetrates in this direction into the sample and you see very clearly that there are zones inside the sample where you form very large deposits in this case it has been marked as G why because it is gypsum calcium, uh, calcium sulphate gypsum okay. Uh, in the case of other zones which are located inside there is a spot marked as E which is ettringite because you have calcium sulphur and aluminum okay you have calcium sulphur and aluminum ettringite is one of the common phases that forms in sulphate attack which causes expansion and cracking of your concrete. In the case of magnesium sulphate you often form this non cementitious phase called magnesium silicate hydrate that happens because your calcium silicate hydrate progressively decalcifies the calcium keeps going out and slowly gets replaced by magnesium. So near the surface you have a lot of lot of deterioration near the surface and that is where you see that your CSH has been completely converted to magnesium silicate hydrate. More examples of SEM from concrete here you see a phase that has been marked as FCSH this basically a calcium uh, sorry a cement mortar which has been stored in a magnesium chloride solution. Now in magnesium chloride the chlorides basically will form salts with the aluminates which are called Friedel salt. The aluminate phases in cement react with chlorides to form phases like Friedel salt which binds the chlorides and prevents it from getting to the steel to cause corrosion right. This binding increases when we replace cement with more aluminous supplementary cementing materials such as slag okay. So this is an example of a Friedel salt phase. What you also see is in this magnesium chloride attack you form a surface zone that is highly porous you can see some porosity in this surface zone but you see here clearly that the internal structure has become completely leached out. So there is a lot of phases that have leached out and you get a very porous appearance on the surface. This is an example of alkali silica reaction damage you see the aggregate is completely cracked in this case because we know that alkali silica reactivity happens with reactive aggregate in the presence of a strong concentration of alkalis in the surrounding medium. The reaction leads to a complete destruction of the aggregate uh, and this can be imaged obviously as cracks in this case. We saw earlier in optical microscopy also we could see that the rim forming around the aggregate of the alkali silica reaction gel was the one which was causing the distress in the concrete. So here this is an example of backscattered SEM imaging. Now this is a very interesting image again is it backscattered or secondary electron image? It is a secondary image because you can actually see the spherical ice crystals that have lined inside a air void okay this is not a pore sorry it is an air void it is a large air void inside of which has been lined by ice crystals. If you remember we do air entrainment in concrete to ensure that there is space for the water to transform to ice so ice should be forming inside the air voids and this is a very interesting image which shows your ice formation inside air voids. Another image of corrosion of steel and reinforced concrete so when you are imaging a backscattered sample of a section taken at the steel concrete interface the steel obviously will appear extremely bright because it is much more denser than concrete so here concrete is appearing black okay. But the rust products which are forming at the interface of the steel and concrete have different levels of grey there okay and in the bottom picture you can actually see the pit that is formed in the steel so that is basically an example of pitting corrosion okay. So see how nicely these, these have been imaged uh, as far as the concrete research studies are concerned. So what you are trying to do is understand the nature of the durability problems by the kind of phase alterations that have happened inside the cementitious system and that is what you are observing very clearly in these images. This is an example of some studies that we had done in our lab here where we looked at ultra high performance concrete as an overlay for existing cracked old concrete beams that could actually lead to 
a repair being done on regular concrete beams. So, here you have old concrete and you can clearly see the interface between the old and ultra high performance concrete layer that is being kept on top. Now, what is the distinguishing feature here is that you have a lot more unhydrated cement in ultra high performance concrete. You have a lot more unhydrated cement, why? You have a very low water cement ratio, so there is not much chance for most of the cement to hydrate. So, ultra high performance concrete does not lead to a lot of hydration, but it leads to a dense packing because of the kind of particles that you actually select with different particle size distributions to form a compact microstructure. You can see very clearly that the porosity in the UHPC is much lower as compared to the porosity in the old concrete. Okay. Now, of course, in this case since we had to image a very long interface you can see that this size is about 100 microns, right? this length is about 100 microns. So, we are trying to image close to more than 500 microns in this picture. So, if you have to take high magnification images you then need, need to stitch them together right? using some image analysis softwares to try and figure out how the interface actually continues over a certain range. Again this is another example of the interface over old concrete. Now interestingly what you see here is that this white layer or whitish layer formed on the surface of the old concrete to which the UHPC is actually bonded. That whitish layer basically is calcium carbonate or calcite. Why is calcite forming on the surface of old concrete? Because of carbonation, right? old concrete is lying outside in the atmosphere, there is atmospheric CO2 entering the concrete and leading to the formation of a layer of calcium hydroxide outside. Okay.